So what we have in agenda, it's uh, we're, to, uh, we're going to talk about the old SAP, the new SAP. Uh, what is Python have to do with SAP? Uh, we're going to see uh, examples using Python at ERP and also Python in SAP HANA. So we're going to talk about not your grandfather's SAP because SAP had changed for it was before. So most people used to see SAP as an all close and real expensive German company that produces software for big, big companies. Also, it was really hard for individuals or uh, freelance developers to actually use it because you needed a tons of RAM, you needed a really big machine. It was pretty difficult to install. It has really ugly graphics and interface that everybody hates. But right now we have the new SAP, which is still German, but it's all around the world, right? So right now it's really easy for individuals or external developers to use it. It still needs a lot of RAM, but we provide uh, really nice alternatives for that. Uh, it's really easy to install now. Uh, it's very friendly, even for people who haven't used before any SAP software. It's still kind of ugly, but we're working on that. And it's actually very committed to open source. Most people doesn't know that. But uh, SAP uh, contributes a lot on Eclipse because most of our new tools are based on Eclipse. So we're doing a lot of contributions there. Uh, so this is a bit of marketing, so sorry about that. But these are some of the new technologies that SAP provides. We provide SAP HANA, which is an in-memory database. We also have Power Builder, which I don't know how many people use that anymore, but it has a new interface, it's based on .NET, so it's supposed to be kind of cool. Uh, we also have the SAP mobile platform, which allows you to create mobile applications that will run on BlackBerry, iPhone, Android, whatever. Also, we have SAP NetWeaver Cloud, which is a platform as a, software, as a service software, sorry. SAP UI5, which is a set of libraries based on HTML5. We have SAP NetWeaver Gateway, which allows us to create REST on all data services. And we also have the SAP NetWeaver Sneak Preview, which is for ABAP developers. Being ABAP the main source of developing inside SAP. So why should we care about this? Because SAP now provides most of the latest technologies for free. In some cases, it's completely free, 45 days, one or three months. So we have free developer licenses. You can try, you can develop, you can share, you can sell. You just need to go to developers.sap.com. I have a couple of stickers, so if you want some stickers, just come to me. So what we get from SAP, we have two options. We have 30 days totally free of charge on cloudshare.com, or we have free developer licenses. You just pay Amazon Web Services for the hosting. And in the case of NetWeaver Cloud and SAP UI5, it's completely free. You can use it on the laptop. So we cut the marketing from there and we go straight to the Python and SAP. So most of the people might not be aware of this, but SAP has always used Python internally, like forever. But in the last months, SAP has started to actually provide more ways for external people to use Python with both ERP and SAP HANA. Because we believe that Python is a really solid, powerful, awesome, stable technology, and it allows us to leverage more power to our applications. So we're gonna see an example using Python and ERP. Actually, at first we didn't have a real connector, so P.S. Harding, which is an SAP hacker hero, created a library to connect Python and ERP. But now we have a new way to do it because the value prototyping team in Waldorf, Germany created the PyRFC, which is a better way to connect Python and the ERP. So we have even management, uh, sorry, yeah. Uh, this new connector is being used uh, by SAP, not to create real products for customers, but it's more like prototypes. So we're using it for uh, even management, time management, web cloud applications, and even 
RFID scanner, model printers, etc. So here we have an example of using a PR, uh, PyRFC. So we have a file, a CFG file. So we're going to have all the connection parameters to the ERP. So we just need to import the library. We need to import the config parser to read the file. So basically, the most important part here should be uh, this one where we're going to read and we're going to set to the selection the parameters that we have read uh, from the file. And this application is only going to say that we have a successful connection or we couldn't connect to the server. So it's very basic just to, to know how it works, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to create an E16 emulation. E16 is an ERP transaction which allows to see all the data from a table, for any table. So it's very used inside CCP. So for this, I use ECG. I'm not going to show for sure the, the whole code because it's kind of long, and I'm pretty sure you all know ECG. So I'm just going to show a couple of, of lines, right? So we define the logging, which is going to be basically the same thing. Uh, we're just going to read the file. We're going to ask for the user and the password because we don't want you know, that to be in the file. So basically, we're going to connect. And if we, can, if we have a successful connection, the most important thing from here, we're going to call RFC read table, which is a remote function call, which is on the ERP. We're going to say, OK, I want to read this table, and then I want to get all the contents. Here, we're going to read what the PyERP or the ERP is returning us. We're going to make some you know, little selections. We're going to try to put that into a structure. So in the end, this is how the program is going to look. We're going to have on the face screen. We're going to put our username, our password. It's going to ask for a table. And we're going to show all the content of the table, which is basically what you can do on ERP using SE16. So this is sort of a emulation. So we can pass any table, and we're going to see all the data from the table. But PRFC is not only a client, meaning that we are not only going to read information for the ERP, but we can also use PRFC as a server. So actually, the ERP is going to go to PRFC. PRFC is going to do some stuff, and it's going to send it back to the ERP. So basically, what we need to do is we need to go to our uh, ERP server. We just create a very simple function module, which is going to have this little code, which is going to be like concatenate hello name from SAP, blah, 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 right? So if we execute it, we're going to pass the name as a parameter, and it's going to return us hello Alvaro from SAP, right? So this is only from the ERP. Now we have here the code. This is going to create a part by RFC server. So here we're going to say hello from by RFC, and we're going to grab the name of a parameter. So we will run this. You see it's going to create a server. Here in the ERP, we're going to execute the same. We want to say that we want to use our by RFC as a server. So actually, the real response for the ERP is going to be hello Alvaro from by RFC. So as you can see, we ran it first from the ERP, and now we are running from the ERP but calling by RFC. So actually, you can put whatever functionality you want on Python, and it's going to return to the ERP, which is really great. And now comes the part where we're going to use Python and SAP HANA. Uh, when we install a SAP HANA client, it provides a lot of drivers for connectivity. And there's one called DB API, which is an already compiled library to make a native collect, uh, connection between Python and SAP HANA. Uh, initially, it was kind of hidden. I mean, you install it, but you really don't know that it's there. 
So actually, I was the one that made it public on the SAP community. I wrote a blog called Python and SAP HANA Just Sir. So I actually show the SAP community that they can use Python together with SAP. Of course, I got some problems because they told me, oh, this is not really for customers. You shouldn't have to write this blog, blah, blah, blah. But I really don't care because I wanted to show people that there's more languages outside SAP, and Python is really cool, and you can use it with SAP HANA. So it was cool. So this is SAP HANA. So here we're going to create a calculation view. You're going to see we have so two tables that we're going to join. We're going to create a projection. Then we're going to uh, join this projection with uh, an attribute view. We're going to have the output. And actually, what we're going to do here is we're going to create a calculated measure. So actually, what happens in SAP HANA is that when we create this calculation, uh, this calculation view is not going to be stored on the database. Actually, every time we execute it or we call it, all this is going to get executed, and also all the calculated measures that we create. So everything happens on the fly. Right, SAP HANA is really, really, really fast in memory database. Everything happens on main memory. So there's no need to save this on the database. So what we're going to do here is going to create a calculated measure called discounted. So basically, we're going to see if the carrier ID is equal to American Airlines, we're going to have a discount price, a discount price of 80%. Otherwise, we're going to leave the price as it is. So we're going to use the DBAP and SAP HANA to read that calculation view. We're going to use bottle to provide that simple table with information. I'm pretty sure you all have to use bottle. So we're just going, we're just going to see uh, how it works, right? So basically, what we have here is the DBAP Connect. We just put information. We put the URL for the SAP HANA, the port, the username, and the password. Right. Here, what we are doing is we are sending commands straight to SAP HANA. So we're going to first, we're going to drop this type uh, test out if it exists. If it doesn't exist, we're, uh, we're going to pass it. We're going to drop a procedure called PyTest. If it doesn't exist, we're just going to go on away. Because we're going to execute this query. We're going to create a type, which is some sort of like a temporal table, right? And we're going to create a procedure, which is going to receive a table. It's going to read our calculation view, and it's going to check this data, right? The uh, career ID, connection ID, the price, and the discounted price. Uh, what we're doing here, what we're saying with result view, proc view, is like we're going to have some sort of a temporary table that we're going to be able to read after the calculation view is done. So basically here, what we are doing is we're creating some SQL code inside Python, and this code is going to be executed in SAP HANA, so we're going to create a procedure, we're going to read the calculation view, and then we're going to get the information back. So basically, when we run the Python uh, out the bottle page, you're going to see the first three ones. You're going to see this is the real price. This is the discounted price. And you're going to see that actually there's a discount of 80%, and the other ones will remain the same. So the cool thing about this is that uh, it's not an ODBC connection. It's a native collection between Python and SAP HANA. And SAP HANA, as I told you, is going to execute the calculation view on the flight. So there's no need to save it on the database. It's going to calculate it just when you want it, and it's really, really, really fast. So actually, if you have an opportunity to try it, please do it. As I told you, some developers at SAP.com, uh, developers.sap.com. It's really, really fast to use. 